So today we're going to be doing a basic disassembly of the Quartz DS83. This is going to give you mostly full access to the cams and the gears, which will likely need some heavy cleaning and re-lubrication if you've just bought one of these. Luckily this is a really easy process, you're only going to need two tools. One is a relatively long flathead screwdriver, about this size should do, and two is you're going to need either some tweezers or a set of lens calipers. Calipers would probably be the best tool for the job, but they can be quite expensive and most people have a pair of tweezers lying around, so that's what I'm going to be using today. So obviously first off, you're going to want to remove any accessories you might have attached to your camera, and then you want to open up the film compartment. You can put any spools you have to one side. And at this point, you're probably going to want to make sure you have some kind of container for storing your loose screws. I'm just going to be using a spare lens cap. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is remove these four screws that hold in this sort of scratch plate, which I'll point out for you in just a second. So we've got one, two, three, and four. You'll probably also want to pop out the pressure plate at some point. So now that those screws are off, we can just lift this piece out. It's quite thin, so it's useful to just lever it up. And there we go. Now this next step is very important, so make sure you don't miss it. The claw and the claw guide are attached to different parts of the camera, so you need to make sure we properly disengage the claw, otherwise when we come to separate these sections later, the claw could get caught and if you're not careful it could even break. So first we'll flip the camera over and turn the claw to the disengaged position by turning this switch here. And next what we want to do is gently grab the end of this thin piece of wire and rest it on top of the claw so it's no longer applying any pressure to it. And we'll just make sure it's definitely free of the claw guide. Okay, that should be good. So next we're going to be removing the trigger mechanism, which once again you have to do in order to separate the camera from its outer housing. So grab the tweezers and we're just going to line them up with these two tiny holes on either side of the trigger and unscrew as you would anything by turning anti-clockwise. Now some small parts will come falling out of here, so make sure you don't lose them. So there's this thread, and there's what is essentially the trigger. You, you'll get a better understanding of how this works in a moment. So the last thing we need to do now is remove three more flathead screws. We'll start with these two here. A magnetic screwdriver could come in handy here, as so the screws are quite recessed. This is also why I suggest getting a relatively long screwdriver. Now this is going to be the trickiest one. I'm not sure how easy it is to see in the video, but just up in the top left corner of the housing, tucked away under here, you'll find the last screw, which you need to take off in order to separate the camera. Okay, so now that that last screw is out, we should just be able to separate these two halves. There we go. We'll place our outer housing down for now. There goes that last recessed screw. So here it is, the main mechanism for the DSA-3. You've got the trigger mechanism there, and if we give it a wind, you'll see our lovely disc shutter spinning. Really amazing how compact they managed to make these things back in the 70s. But anyway, from here you should have access to most of the cams and gears. Mine looked very clean, but I assure you it didn't look like that when I got it. If any of you guys are finding that your cameras are running slow or jamming, it's probably because these gears are full of this thick black grease. So what I recommend is getting some cotton buds and spending maybe an hour or two just cleaning as much of it out as you possibly can. I used IPA to clean mine, which took a while but got there in the end. Aerosol cleaners can be quite good too for blasting out any like stubborn bits of crap. Then you'll probably want to reapply some light oil to keep things moving smoothly. The specific type you use shouldn't matter too much as long as it's thin and works well with metal. It's worth mentioning that I really don't recommend you break down the main mechanism any further than this, as putting it back together I imagine would be just an absolute nightmare, especially if you lost any of the parts. After that all that's left to do is reassemble the camera, as you'd expect this is just the inverse of what we did earlier, so I'm just going to shut up for now whilst I put this thing back together.
So there you have it, a basic teardown of the Quartz DS83. I hope this video helps some of you guys because I really could have used this video when I first got mine. If any of you have any questions, then leave them in the comments down below, and I'll try to help as best I can, although I'm by no means an expert. Thanks for watching.